Hello, this is Matthew Harms. I'm with EMA, and in the next few minutes, I want to show you how to do some signal integrity analysis from the Print and Circuit Board tool using the ORCAD PCB Designer Professional license. So what you need to do to start off is find a net that you're interested in simulating. I'm going to take a look at this net right here. So it's called M clock on the one side, you can see that right there, and N1072680 on the other side of that resistor. So that's an inline resistor. This net is going from here over to the connector to pin J1, component J1, pin 52, and over here to component U5. We can show the rat's nest. It's not completely routed, but that's fine. We can show the rat's nest just by here going to display, show rats. Let's go to components, and let's pick this guy, and that'll show the complete rats. So we can see where that, that net is going completely. Some of it's routed again, some of it's not. You can see there's some vias here as well, too. Okay. So once we're ready to do some signal integrity analysis on this net, what we need to do is we need to define models and make sure the things related to signal integrity are set up correctly. To do that, let's go to Setup, SI Design Setup right here, and this is the main form that's going to be invoked to do signal integrity analysis and get everything set up. I'm just going to leave everything checked for right now just so we can run through all the steps. This is kind of like a wizard to get us through setting up our our net. First what it wants us to do is pick the nets that we're interested in simulating. In our case we just want to simulate those two, those two nets which is going to be one X net eventually but as of yet it doesn't know it's an X net. So I want to just simulate those two nets. I'm going to uncheck all the other nets and I want to bring those two to the front. So I want to take a look at M clock. I'm going to select that one and I want to take a look at that N107 net as well. So let's grab those two nets. Those are the two that I want to take a look at. And the rest of the questions kind of hinge on what you pick here. So just pick the nets you're interested in, then you'll have less to configure if you pick fewer than all of the nets. Next, it's going to ask us the library search directories, where we're going to be searching for libraries. So if you have external IBIS models that you've downloaded, this would be the place to add that directory where those files exist. In my case, I'm just going to be using defaults. So I'll hit Next. These are the extensions it's going to be looking for for different types of files. That's fine with me. I'm going to hit Next. And here's your, it specifies your working directory and some libraries that it was able to find in those directories for me. That looks great for me. I don't have any custom libraries at this point, so I'm just going to hit Next again. Next up, it's asking us about the power and ground nets. So it already noticed that VCC was 5 volts. It has some other here's that it thinks might be powers and ground. So I'm just going to quickly go through and assign those to some DC voltage level so that it understands more about those. So just going here quickly and assigning 0 to grounds, 12 to volt, uh, 12 to the, the voltage nets there, and that's all I need to do for assigning my DC nets. I get a warning here that one of my voltage net, the ground net, contains both power and ground pins. So when the schematic was made, it must have been made in such a way that there were some ground pins called power, but that's okay. I don't need to worry about that right now. I'm just going to ignore those errors and hit OK. Next up is the cross section. So we want to take a look at the cross section, make sure that it looks OK. So I'm just going to manually edit that. And in the cross section, everything looks fine to me. The layer stack up looks OK. And I'm just going to hit OK. It's going to give us some grief about the dielectric constant here. So that's OK, though. We'll just come back to that and figure it out. So when I hit Next here, it's going to tell us that it doesn't like that dielectric constant. I can hit to resolve that. So I'll just have it resolve that for me and change it to something that it likes better. And so it gets rid of that error for me. Next up, we need to say what type of classes my components are. So I only have three components touching those two nets. I have U5 up here. I have this connector device over here and the resistor in the middle. So the resistor in the middle is a discrete. That's fine. The IC is this BGA up here. That's fine as well. And the IO, I actually want to change that from a connector to something else, to some sort of receiving device, because I don't have this connected up to another board right now. So I'm going to change this from an IO to an IC, and that means it's going to have some input model that's being modeled at this pin. Next up, I want to assign some models for these devices that I have here. So R5, I'm just going to create a default model. And it's going to go off and create a default resistor model for me. So that's great. That's actually all done. 
Next up, I want to make a model for this U5 device. And at this point, it would be a good time to decide if I want my U5 to drive or if I want my connector device over here to be the driving pin. In my case, I'm going to set it up so I can go either way. So I'm going to assign, or I'm going to, sorry, create a new model right here. So let's create a new model. And instead of having these be input pins, I'm going to change them to input output pins. So I'm just going to copy and paste all the pins from the input specification to the input output and hit OK. It's going to give me a warning that it doesn't have ground pins right here and it doesn't have power pins, but that's fine. For, for now, that should be OK. Next up is the the connector J1 component. So I want to create a new model for that as well too. I'm going to make all these pins input outputs instead just so I have the ability to make them go either way. And no ground, no power pins again. That's all right as well. I'm not too worried about that. All right, so at that point I'm done there. Let's go to, it's asking me about differential pairs. I'm not defining any right now. And last up is just the uh, look at what type of simulations we might be running. I'm not going to worry about this right now. It's going to give me some warnings here. So I have XNet contains a stub. Those are the vias that are coming off that haven't been routed yet. So the breakout vias, that's okay. And my voltage net contains some non-power pins. I'm not too worried about that. So let's just ignore all these errors. We don't need to see them again and hit finish. At that point, I've completely defined everything I need to for this net that I want to take a look at. So to analyze it now, just go to Tools, Topology Extract right here, and you can even you could browse for the net or just click on it in the schematic. It'll take you to mclock. I want to take a look at the routed interconnects, so the physical traces that are used here. I want to I want to take a look at those in my Signal Integrity tool. So I'm going to check that button, and then I'm going to hit View right here. That's going to take me over to Sig Explorer right here. And in SIG Explorer, I get to see my topology. So here's my U5, that's my BGA device, and that's uh, that's an input-output, and that's coming over here. There's some via stubs there that it was worried about. Here's my rat's nest. Here's some physical traces, my resistor there. Uh, another via that I see, some more traces, and it's being received over here at the connector. I'm going to choose my... BGA to drive right now, so I'm just going to select that part, right mouse button, stimulus, and I'm going to change that to a pulse. That's slightly off screen there, but I'm choosing pulse. And I'm going to run the simulation, so I'm just going to hit the signal simulate button. That's going to bring up the SIG Wave tool, and in SIG Wave, I'm able to see how the simulation went. And I can see in my case that it was pretty overdamped right here, and my output is not doing very well. What needs to happen here is I need to decrease the resistance of my inline resistor. 10K is way too big. So let's come up here, change this to something like 50, and try that simulation one more time. So I'm going to hit sig Signal Simulate again, and I'm going to get some new results. So over here in SigWave, I now see some new results, and this looks a lot better than it did before. I could continue playing around with models and finish routing my board and make sure that this signal looks good throughout that process. But that's how you do it. That's how you extract a trace from the PCB tool over to the signal integrity tool using only the ORCAD PCB designer license. Thanks for watching.